Hello, my name is Rick Houston, and welcome to the Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. Presented by Las Vegas Motor Speedway, America's racing showplace. Through all of that, Greg Pollock stayed true to me, what he said he would do. And I really couldn't ask of anything else, you know. Proud of what I did, but just don't have the trophy and the and the and the big ring to show for it. But uh, uh, it was uh, it was uh, a, a letdown. But yes, you know, that's the way racing is. I remember having to go to Richard Childress's motorhome in Atlanta in the infield on a Thursday afternoon and telling him that I wasn't going to take his offer. Kenny loses it on the bottom. He gets bumped and loses on the bottom and does, and misses the rear bumper of my car by inches. Yeah. And takes everybody out behind me. The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. So you had, uh, what, two or three years of Slim Jim sponsorship. Um really stable company uh, well really i didn't have that many years i didn't okay. have that many years with uh with with uh the slim jim folks as a matter of fact it's kind of funny that you we're talking about slim jim because i've often heard dale jr talk about he still owes me one from a myrtle beach race you know and that was when i was driving the slim jim car but what is not really told in that whole story is you got a you got a young guy like myself trying to manage the team one of the higher profile sponsors in the series pressure was on pretty good just had my son at that time but he was born in april my birthday and we go to myrtle beach and i knew i was only a handful of cars that i had to outrun and i could win a race if and i felt like if i won a race in the slim jim sponsorship even as bad as some of the other races had gone, I'd made a change with Addington and, and different things that I could really, you know, I could salvage this thing. Let's just keep it going. And I, I guess but what, what I'm hearing that, that, that Junior says is I, I, on the start of the race, I, I remember not qualifying as well as I thought I should. And at that time, David Green was driving the uh, 95 car, if I'm not mistaken. And I remember getting, in, but getting into it. I qualified in the teens, early, uh, maybe 12, 13, 14. So I'm like, I got to get there fast. You know, I got to get there. And I, and, I, and I really messed up myself in qualifying because I should have qualified like a driver. I should have qualified a little bit better, but still. And I got kind of banged up on I, – I guess I, I, we got banged, and, and Junior still says he owes me one, but I wasn't focused on Junior. I was probably the only person in, in South Carolina that was in, in Myrtle Beach that wasn't focused on Dell Junior. But I was, not, yeah. I was yeah. not focused on Dell Junior at all. I was focused on David Green, uh, Mike McLaughlin. I was focused on those guys because I knew that was my, my, one of my biggest shots of that year with that sponsorship to get a win. And with me qualifying bad, I was already putting myself behind. And and uh, David Green ended up winning the race, and I ended up running second to David. So, I mean, I uh, – and then the Slim Jim thing kind of, you know, uh, sort of went away, you know, after that. And uh, really didn't know what I was going to do. And then uh, uh, Greg Pollock's called and uh, was able to put some things together and – had a had a l- lot more races after that, so I was very very blessed for that. You had talked about not really considering the cup stuff before because you were so concentrated on your own team. When Greg called, what was the difference? Were you just to that point where you knew that you had to do something, or well, Slim Jim you might had decided? Slim Jim had asked me to go with another team. Okay. To, to, they knew my team wasn't um, wasn't performing like we needed to, and they'd asked me to go to another team, and I said, "No, I'm not going to do it." I stayed loyal to what I had. I'm not going to do it. I didn't have another. I didn't have another sponsor to replace them. So the word kind of got out at the end of the year there that I was going to sell my my team basically. And I remember some of the crew guys calling, and they felt bad for even asking me if I was going to sell my team. Uh, and uh, 
I was like, man, I got, I got to survive. You know, I got to do something. I either got to go drive for somebody else. I don't have a sponsorship uh, uh, put in place. And I remember Greg Pollitt's calling me, and he said, look, he he'd, he'd uh, had to had to deal with, with Chad Little, and uh, they won won several races, and that had gone away. <clears throat> Not really sure why that went away, but he said, I don't have a team, I don't have a car, I don't have a hauler, I don't have anything. Do you want to kind of do this together? I said, well, I don't have any money to operate it. I got a few pieces, you know, fortunate enough. I got gears, transmission, and a few cars and, and a hauler. I said, but will you take this and let's try to make something of it? And uh, that's kind of the way all that went down. And he took it and actually drove the first year. I'm wanting to say it was 97 or 8, 97 maybe? I think 98. 98? Yeah. Okay. And he basically ran that ran that deal out of his pocket, and and that's why I felt then so loyal to him. And and he and and he was he did what he said he would do, and in this sport, a lot of times that's not the the priority, and uh, and we tried we got a few sponsors here and there, but he but he basically ran the whole deal out of his pocket that year, and we were able to put together some sponsorship for 99 and then and then 2000 really got some good stuff and got you know uh jeff green over there and, and was able to form what was then ppc racing what was your reaction when he brought jeff in as your teammate in 99 you you had been used to being the only rooster in the hen house so to speak but all of a sudden here's jeff in the mix and jeff is obviously very competitive mm-hmm. what what was your reaction i don't know that i really had a reaction i mean i really don't i know he and harold holly hit it off big time right off the get-go i mean they hit it off big time and they were kicking our butts i mean i they just were i mean i'm not yeah. trying to say they weren't i mean we won we won some races and um was able to get uh steve addington back in and that's when we started trying to mend our relationship you and steve me and steve yeah and we were we were we were getting there and i thought we got there um um and i really felt like we were going to carry the torch of winning the championship the year after jeff did and uh, unfortunately we had some motor issues there at the end of the year uh kind of halfway through the season uh, broke four motors. We were leading the points, and I didn't. I didn't feel like anybody can beat me. I didn't care Greg Biffle or anybody. I just. I knew at that time that this was my. This was my year. I just knew it. And uh, you. You thought that what was your year? Two thousand. No. Two thousand one. Two thousand. It was it one or two when Biffle won the championship? What year did Biffle win the championship? Two. Two. Two thousand two was a year I felt like we were. You know, and I won Rockingham early that year, and I was just like, "This is supposed to, you know, this is, this is, you know." Jeff had gone on to run Cup, a Cup, and uh, uh, Riggs was my teammate now, and now I'm the elder statesman in the team, and won Rockingham by half a track, and just cruising, and and I don't want to say it became easy, but it became the normal thing to to run in the top three. If we weren't in the top three or top five, we were not comfortable, and we had some mechanical issues to the end of the year. I'm not going to talk about that, but uh, we had some mechanical issues. Uh, uh, had some motors let us down, and and uh, that wasn't typical for our engine builder at that time because they were pretty much bulletproof and uh, wasn't able to win uh, the championship. And proud of what I did, but just don't have the trophy in the in the in the big ring to show for it. But uh, uh, it was uh, it was uh, a, a letdown. But yes, you know, that's the way racing is. I do want to go back and and ask. I know at one point there was a, a the the team Progressive Motorsports was was your team, and then whatever happened with PPC, what happened there? There was a lot of things behind the scenes. At that time, I was trying to focus on my family and, and just make it to the racetrack. And I was actually been a driver at that time. There was a lot of things happening partnership-wise with Greg, um, uh, different things 
that were a little bit out of my control, out of my handle. Man, if I showed up, my name was still over the door. I was happy. You know, everything was rocking and rolling. I was good. And and uh, and I will say this: through all of that, Greg Pollock stayed true to me. What he said he would do. And I really couldn't ask of anything else, you know. Um, even when I had an opportunity to leave Greg, we were we were being we were being promised a pretty good sponsor after the Albertsons um, sponsorship left. He was being Greg was being you know promised the world if I stayed there, and <clears throat> and we were I was being offered an opportunity to go with a Cup team to run a partial bush deal and some cup races and i felt like that it was my time to probably do that and and i rem, i rem, but greg kept you know telling me just to wait you know wait the sponsorship's coming coming you know it's coming 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 well i remember having to go to richard childress's motorhome in atlanta in the infield on a thursday afternoon and telling him that I wasn't going to take his offer to share a season with Harvick and the Reese car. And after Atlanta on that Tuesday, I found out the sponsor wasn't coming to PPC. And now, what year would that have been? Two thousand. That would have been the end of two thousand. No, that would have been. That was after the, the Albertsons deal, so we're pushing up to about 2003 now. Okay, all 2003 right. 2003 yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, I called my buddy, uh, Mike Dillon, who I'd race skills with a lot, and uh, they had hired Clint Boyer that day. Uh, so that was a missed opportunity. But I don't, I don't say it was a regret because Greg was staying true to what he said yeah. he would do. And we were able to put together a, a partial sponsorship for the following year, the Miller High Life sponsorship, and, and he ran the rest of the races out of his pocket, basically, because he felt so bad about taking that away from, you know, that opportunity away. But I'll never say anything negative about Greg and what he what he stayed true to me. I yeah. mean, I'll never say anything negative about that. I just – I would love to have seen how that opportunity developed because, you know, there was a lot of – and that was one of the – probably the only, only decision in racing that I've – that I made, and I didn't listen to my dad. Really? Yes, yes. My dad and I had gone to welcome uh, the week prior, and um, when we left there, he said, uh, "He said, uh, I'm sure you're going to do this. You got to do this." And I'm like, "Well, no, nah, I'm I'm a full time racer. I'm not a part time racer. I'm full time racer. I'm going to win a championship." And I think that lingering in 22 was kind of still that lingering. I think things probably would have gone a little differently had I had the, had I, you know, had the trophy and, and, the, and the championship then. I don't know that. I'm just yeah. you know, speculating. But I can remember uh, my dad said, you got to do this. Oh, well, you know, we've got this sponsor supposed to come in full time. I want to run full time. You know, this is what I'm, you know, what I want to do. And I don't want to be a part-timer and – what was the sponsor? Do you remember? At the time? Yeah. Um, the one that you didn't get. Um, Trim Spa. The spa trips, but Trim Spa. Really? They're going to have two cars. They want to sponsor Kenny and myself. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Sure was. So don't take that as a regret. I just wish yeah. I would have, I w- I yeah, wish yeah, I would have yeah. seen how that one was going to go. Yeah. And I can I can remember shaking in my boots when I had to walk in until Mr. Childress I wasn't going to take the ride. All right, so the year two thousand, you and Jeff are teammates, and Jeff proceeds to put a holy whooping on everybody. Mm-hmm. I mean that was that was one of the craziest things I'd ever been a part of. Just seeing how dominant that team was. Mm-hmm. You were also running well. We were but, a top five car every week, but he was winning every week. Yeah. So, I mean, there was a difference. Was there a frustration for you, or were you okay? No, I, I wasn't. I mean, it was a, it was a frustration for me, but, but Harold Holly and Greg – Harold Holly was Jeff Green's crew chief at the time. He, he was 
Greg's bring back from the Chad Little days. So that was kind of an instant back yeah. jail. And Jeff, Jeff's a great, I mean, he's a great racer. I mean, Jeff, he's hardcore and he was, he was a great racer. I mean, so you couldn't take that away from them at all. It was, it was definitely frustrating. Um, I'd brought, like I say, at that time I'd brought, I'd, I'd asked to bring uh, Steve back and was able to bring him back and, and we were doing well. I mean, we just got the Fords, uh, the Ford deal, and at that time, the only Ford that was in the in the Bush series was Mark Martin, and every time he was on the track, he won. And yeah, that's unheard of these days. You don't see that, you know, uh, and the number of Cup guys in the in the Bush series. But I was okay with it after we progressed, and when you know Harold when 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 Jeff went on and Harold got. Riggs, who was a great racer himself, that showed to where they didn't gel quite as much, try, quite as good as it, it just clicked. For I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses. We got yeah. our butts kicked. I mean, we yeah. got, I mean, we did. I mean, the, the cars were built on his cars were built on one side of the shop, mine were on the other. And I felt like Steve and I were were building something that we could work into. And I think that's where the culmination in 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 22. Then we were like, okay, here we are. We're going to win this championship. You know, you're saying 22. You mean 02? 02. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. 02. All right. I apologize. 02. 02. And, and so I felt like it had kind of progressed as as a little later for us to kind of come into everything and, and, and come into what – and uh, uh, I can remember going and testing with, with Harold, um, going with us some to our test – and Steve Addington would always tell me, well, when Harold makes the changes, you go faster. And and I really didn't know that that was the case. But I saw how fast he and Jeff were, so I knew that I had to pick up the pace. If, if he was there, I had to pick up the pace. So there was a, little, a lot of inner team, not struggles, but there were a little bit of a – uh, of a edginess a little bit, you know, and and then and then I keep going back to O two because I'm like, okay, I, I I put all my childhood differences with Steve apart, you know, behind and 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 Steve at that time was doing a great job. He was doing a phenomenal job, and I just felt like we were for once there was nothing going to take us, you know, you know, really stop us. I felt like we were going to, you know, uh, do good things, and and we did. We 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 started off great. All right, so 2002, Mm -hmm. uh, you went four races. Mm -hmm. What was the difference? It was just the confidence in each other, and and um, as a driver, I don't look at winning the four races. I look at the five other races that we had opportunities to win, and that would have put us on the year, sort of what. Jeff and Harold had a couple of years prior to that, but it just didn't go our way. You know, like I say, it was some, so, and it really wasn't really part of our doings. It was, it was more of the mechanical failures and different things that, I mean, when you're, when you're running in the top four, I usually say top five, top four in four races and brake motors, it's kind of hard to, to overcome that at the end of the year. But the difference was just the cars were being built the same. Um, and and we were just uh, we were just in in you, you hear of a lot of the bigger combinations Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss and, and all these you know wonderful combinations and we weren't I'm, I'm not trying to equate with what we were doing to them but we felt like when we unloaded we were not going to be a top five car we were gonna we were gonna you know potentially win the race and. Um, and and we showed that early on, and when you show it early on in a year, it just carries through the year, it carries through. Probably the most bizarre race I've ever personally covered was Talladega mm-hmm. in two thousand two. Mm-hmm. I my brother was there, first race, only race he's ever been to in his life. <laughs> uh, Talladega is great, man. It's the most exciting race. You 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 just won't believe it, and. 
what, 10th lap or so. Yep. Close 30 cars wreck. And that puts you in the lead. And you're out there by yourself, basically. Well, as myself and, uh, and uh, Stacy Compton, the 59 car. Yeah. And Tim Fedewa. And, and Fedewa was, was a little bit behind us. But uh, if you remember that happening, we had just rolled. Kenny Wallace was leading the race. Yeah. And Compton and I, we had drafted all day the day before in practice. And he was starting right there with me. And I knew that he was my ticket to get to the front. So I shoved him. I'm talking about beat the back bumper off his car. And we had just rolled the outside of, of Kenny getting into one and rolling around him on the outside. And if, if you look back at, at that wreck, Kenny loses it on the bottom. He gets bumped and loses it on the bottom and, does, and misses the rear bumper of my car by inches. Yeah. And takes everybody out behind me. Yeah. I can remember my dad spotting on the back straightaway and going – I don't see a car coming through the wreck yet. Yeah. You know, we're already almost down into three. And that was a very bizarre race, but um, I got the trophy for that one anyway, you know. so to, Was that was that like the longest test session that you'd ever had? Because you weren't racing. Well, we were. Because – because in Addington, actually, I'll give I give Steve credit for this. Addington made the call that put us in front of the fifty nine. We didn't have enough push support to drive by the fifty nine. Stacy, Stacy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Compton. So it's, it was it was whoever came out of the pits was going to win the race ahead. Yeah. Well. Steve actually pitted me one lap earlier than he had already told the 59 guys, Compton guys, that we were going to pit. And I just, I guess a half, a second or so better pit stop. And we were able, when, when Compton pitted the next lap, we were able to, to, to beat him out of pits. And uh, so Steve actually, as, as unexciting as that race was, there was excitement that, well, once we got in front of the 59 or the Stacy, we were, we're just riding. That's right. And I can remember that race. I'll tell you a side note on that. I'm pretty sure it was Purvis. They were interviewing. He was sitting on the back of his truck. They were interviewing him on TV. And now you know how long that takes for a driver to get out of the car, go sit on the back of his, his hauler, and he had, you know, had to sit there drinking water. And I remember them interviewing saying, well, you're still in top in, in a top 10 position if you can get your car back out on the racetrack. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah. that's, how, that's how long yeah. that was, you know. Yeah. So, uh, wow. And you mentioned Fedewa. Fedewa was going to do a starting park. Yeah. And that's why I got his feet burned so bad because he wasn't even planning to race. Yeah, his yeah. feet were crispy. Bad. Crispy bad. after the race. Yes, bad. How big of a disappointment was it at the end of the year – that you didn't come away with that championship. Oh, it was it was devastating. I mean, we I, I just knew that it was ours. And I, I'm not taking anything away from Biffle and his team, but I didn't I wasn't really focused on anybody else. I mean, we were just it was one of those years to where when things go right, you don't look at anybody else. You only you focus on yourself and you if you if you finish sixth and think you should have finished second and and you just go well we should have finished you know a lot better and at that time we were racing sometimes against twenty cup guys on a given weekend it wasn't like we were just I was racing against Greg Biffle yeah I mean we were we were sizing ourselves up against the Heat I mean we're the big boys and 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 that was tough you know but we were able to do that and and um, it just uh, it, that was a different era in the Bush series of where we are now, but I, it was, and I really felt like that's what, you know, I go back to the, the earlier comments. I really felt like that's kind of what made some of my future decisions after that, because I really, but I just never could get back to that click, you know, that, that, you know, and I don't know why. And I don't know if, if anybody else in that, you know, uh, I think any sports teams may they may not be able to explain why why is it so easy to throw strikes on on a given night besides you know yeah. six inches off the plate and it's just 
and I don't want to say it was easy because everybody was working their tails off, but it just seemed like everything we touched was was good. All right, I'm just going to ask, and don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> but a little birdie told me at one at one point back then that the team, the organization, had at the very least tested traction control. Confirm, deny, or I, I can, in the interview. I, I can say this. If we ever had traction control, and I'll go to my grave saying this, I didn't know it. Okay. Um, it was very – in the industry, when you start winning like we were doing, Yeah. Jeff started it. Riggs came on in and, and won races, and, and, and we were winning races. I can remember racing at Milwaukee, and um, – I can remember Gary Nelson. We were on the on the front straightaway getting ready to start the race. And I either qualified on the pole or outside pole. And I can remember him almost being in the right side of my car when I started the car. Really? And after that race, I and, and, and actually I can remember before I got in the car. A NASCAR official came over and, and asked me if I had anything in my pockets. And wow. I didn't. And Nelson was on the front straightaway. And I can remember when the car parked after the race, they took all the electronics out of the car. That's how much it was semi, or, or that was thought of at that time. And there was a lot of that going on in, in the in the yeah. business. It, 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 Harold, I talked to Harold Holly for the show, and he said after Jeff won, I think Myrtle Beach, mm-hmm. uh, which he shouldn't have won. The, okay, <laughs> all right. I got taken out by Phil Parson, but that's not yeah. Fine. Okay, 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 all right, I got sorry. you. Sorry, sorry, to bring that up. But anyway, um, he said that that Mike Helton was there, and Mike Helton had come basically to catch somebody with traction control and after Jeff won that race Harold said that they tore his car down uh, he, he said that they put uh, uh, the the rollers on the chassis to get it back into the truck mm-hmm. basically I, took it, the car back to the shop in, in a bucket yeah several times that happened yep, yep. 